I will now define the normal and tangential components of acceleration. We will start with a smooth curve that is parameterized by r of t. And let's recall that the velocity vector is given by the derivative of the position vector. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the magnitude of the derivative of the position vector, and then I'm going to divide by that magnitude. Now the magnitude of the derivative of the position vector, we call that speed, that's the scalar v of t. And then r prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t, we define that as the tangent vector. That's just another way that we can write the velocity vector. It's the speed or the magnitude of velocity times the direction which is given by the tangent vector. Now the acceleration, that's going to be the derivative of velocity. But we can take that derivative using the product rule. It's the derivative of speed, and then we're going to leave the tangent vector alone plus speed left alone times the derivative of the tangent vector. Now this first part, we're going to leave the same, but I want to rewrite the second part. And I'm going to use the same trick that I used before. So I'm going to have v of t, then I'm going to multiply by the magnitude of the derivative of the tangent vector, and then I'm going to divide by the magnitude of the derivative of the tangent vector. Now why would we do that? Well this expression is in fact our definition of the normal vector. We said that the normal vector was t prime of t divided by the magnitude of t prime of t. And then, let's recall what our definition of curvature was. That was the derivative of the tangent vector in magnitude divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the position vector. So another way that we can rewrite that is the derivative of the tangent vector, the magnitude of that divided by the speed, v of t. And so now I'm going to rewrite the second part of the acceleration using the curvature and the normal vector. So we can say the acceleration is v prime of t times the tangent vector. And then I'm going to add to that, well, let's see what how we can rearrange what we've got. So I have v of t times the magnitude of t prime of t. So essentially, if I multiply this side by v of t squared and multiply this side by v of t squared, then what I have is in fact that v of t times the magnitude of the tangent vector is kappa times the square of speed. And then t prime of t divided by the magnitude of t prime of t is the normal vector. So acceleration can be broken up into two pieces. There's a part that's multiplied by the tangent vector, and then there's another part that's multiplied by the normal vector. So there's a tangential component and a normal component. So we refer to the tangential component as a sub t, and that gets multiplied by the tangent vector. And then the normal component we refer to as a sub n. 
So we can use this equation to define the tangential component and the normal component of acceleration. So there are two components to acceleration. We call them the tangential and the normal components or directions. And then the tangential component, the magnitude there, is going to be v prime of t, the derivative of speed. And then the normal component is going to be kappa, the curvature, times the square of speed. But these are not easy to calculate. It's not easy to find the derivative of speed or to find the curvature. So we're going to figure out how to rewrite these formulas in terms of r, our position vector, our prime, and our double prime. So in order to do that, I first want to show you what the velocity dot acceleration is. So velocity dot acceleration is going to be speed times the tangent vector. That's velocity dotted with acceleration. So here we have the derivative of speed times the tangent vector plus kappa v squared times the normal vector. And now I would like to compute that dot product. Well, that's going to be v of t times v prime of t. And then we're going to have the tangent vector dotted with the tangent vector. I'm going to suppress the t's for a moment to make this easier. So that's going to be speed v times the derivative of speed v prime. And then we have tangent vector dotted with the tangent vector. Plus, we're going to have kappa v cubed. And then we have the tangent vector dotted with the normal vector. Now, it turns out that the tangent vector is the unit tangent vector. So t dot itself should be 1, because any unit vector dotted with itself is going to be 1. But we also can recall that the tangent and normal vectors are perpendicular, so their dot product is 0. What that tells us is, is that the that v dot a, the, the dot product of velocity and acceleration, is just v of t times v prime of t. Thus, if we want to find the tangential component of acceleration, the way that we can do that is just to find v prime of t, and we know that v prime of t is going to be v of t dot a of t, the velocity dot acceleration, divided by v of t. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to solve for v prime of t by dividing by this v of t. Okay, but we can rewrite this in terms of r, r prime, and r double prime. The tangential component is going to be r of t, r, excuse me, it's going to be r prime of t dot r double prime of t. Those are the velocity and the acceleration divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. And now we need the normal component of acceleration. So that's supposed to be kappa times v squared. And we saw previously that curvature kappa was the magnitude of our prime of t cross our double prime of t. 
divided by the magnitude of r prime of t cubed. And then we're multiplying that curvature by the magnitude of r prime of t squared, because that's v squared. And so now we can summarize, and there's this interesting symmetry to these formulas. The tangential component of acceleration is going to be r prime dot r double prime. And we're going to divide by the magnitude of r prime of t. And then the normal component is actually r prime cross r double prime. and then divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. Here we've canceled out the two here with r prime of t squared there. And so now these are the tangential and normal components of acceleration. So let's look at an example the example that we're going to look at is our curve is going to be that helix. R of t is parameterized by cosine t, sine t, and t. And let's see if we can find the tangential and normal components of acceleration. So first, let's just find the velocity. The velocity here, okay, that's going to be r prime of t. And that's, the derivative is negative sine t, cosine t, and 1. And then the acceleration, that's the derivative of velocity, or the second derivative of position. That's going to be negative cosine t negative sine t, and 0. I'm going to take the derivative. So the tangential component, a sub t, we said was going to be r prime of t dot r double prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. So the tangential component of acceleration, that looks like it's going to be sine t cosine t minus cosine t sine t plus 0. That's computing the dot product of r prime and r double prime. And then the magnitude is going to be the square root of r of sine squared t plus cosine squared t plus 1. Well, if you look at the numerator, sine t cosine t minus cosine t sine t, that's going to be 0. So the numerator is 0. So the tangential component of acceleration is 0. So there's no tangential acceleration. So the normal component of acceleration, well, that's going to be the cross product of r prime of t and r double prime of t divided by the magnitude of r prime of t. And so we're going to have to compute that cross product. There's an i, j, k negative sine t, cosine t, and 1. And then finally, negative cosine t, negative sine t, and 0. And in fact, um, we've computed this cross product before. So when we computed that cross product, we got sine t 
negative cosine t and one, and that's what we need to take the magnitude of. We're gonna divide that by the magnitude of our prime of t. And so that's the magnitude, again, of negative sine t, cosine t, and one. And without computing the magnitudes of these vectors, it should be apparent that the magnitudes are the same because I'm squaring the components. And so this, in fact, is one. So that says that the normal uh, component of acceleration is one. What that means is, is that the acceleration vector in this case is the same as just the normal vector. And that's going to be minus cosine t, minus sine t, and zero. And what's interesting is, is that normal component of acceleration, it points inward. Right? We, the x component is negative, the y component is negative, there is no z component. Okay, that, what that means is, is that if we have this helix, and we're looking at the tangential component, okay, that's going to be the velocity, right? So the velocity is going to point out like this. But then the normal component is actually going to point inward to the circle, okay? So that's going to be the acceleration. So if you pick uh, any point along that spiral, okay, the velocity is going to point tangent, and then the acceleration is going to point inward. It's always pointing inward. From a top-down view, so let's say we were just looking in the xy plane, we would just see this. So this would be a top view. And then we would have a velocity that would look like this. And then our acceleration would be pointing inward to the center. Okay, this is in fact called centripetal acceleration. So when you have this circular motion that you see, and from the top down view, it looks like circular motion. When you have this circular motion, then the acceleration is going to point inward to the center. That's that centripetal acceleration.